What's up, everybody? How you doing this morning? Woo! Anybody here have been like really mad at their mom? I'm talking like super mad. Okay, okay. So check this out. When I was in seventh grade, uh, I, I started to like fall in love with riding my bike and so I set a goal that I was going to ride my bike to school every single day of the year. And so I started riding there, riding back. It's, it's going good for a few months and months and months go by. And that was all good until the weather, until it became winter, right? And then it was like, oh man, this, this is hard. But I was like, I'm committed. I'm going to do it no matter what. And so I'm riding my bike and then there was this one day that happened when it was horrible weather, like freezing cold, blizzard, below zero, I don't know. And my mom wouldn't let me ride my bike to school. And I'm like, no, mom, I've got to accomplish this goal that I said, please, please let me ride to school. And she's like, you are not riding your bike to school. And I got ticked off. I was so mad, like, mom, I've been working for months and months and months on this goal, and you're ruining the whole thing. I was so mad, like, how, what do you, well, what term do you use when you're, like, really, really mad these days? What? Triggered. I was triggered. I was triggered at my mom. I was, like, low-key triggered. And I, and, and I was, like, mom, come on, like, ah! Like, for weeks, I was so mad because my mom ruined my goal of riding my bike to school every single day. Well, I got over it a couple months later, you know. And uh, I was like, well, I'm going to try again in eighth grade. Eighth grade didn't work out. I'm going to try it again in ninth grade. Ninth grade didn't work out. Tenth grade. So I've been trying this goal. I've been riding my bike to school every day for like three or four years now. I'm in tenth grade. And... By now, my mom has been like, all right, I'm just going to let you try to do this crazy thing. And so it gets to the middle of 10th grade, and it's the middle of winter, and I have re I'm in wrestling. So I, we have wrestling practice, and this one day the weather was so bad that my wrestling coach ended practice early, like, it's bad out there. Everybody go home. And, and I'm like on my bike, you know, and my coach is like, Adam, you, you can't ride your bike home. You got to put your bike in the back of my truck. And I'm like, listen, coach, you're not my mom. I'm riding my bike home. I don't care. He's like, and everyone on my team is like, this is insane. Like, what's wrong with you, dude? Like, it's a blizzard out there. It's freezing. You're going to die. Somehow I made it home that day, and I, and I was able to actually accomplish that goal in 10th grade of riding my bike to school every day. Well, by then, I'd been doing it for four years, and it was just kind of like habit. I had a rhythm of riding my bike to school every day. I had a routine. And so I just kept going. In 11th grade, I got a driver's license. I had a car, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to ride my bike. Like, in, t in 11th and 12th grade, I didn't ride my bike every day, but like 95% of the days. And so, because I was just, I had the rhythm, I had the routine. Well, fast forward, I get to college, and one of my goals was to, to be a mountain bike racer in college. And so I, because of this, this rhythm of riding my bike every day, it was six miles to my school, six miles. So I'm riding 12 miles every single day of my life. Plus, I did other things like training and bike racing and all this stuff. As a result of all that, a freshman year in college, I went to Fort Lewis College in Durango, Colorado, which at the time had the best mountain biking team in the country. And I was able to like actually make the varsity mountain biking team as a freshman. And I was just like, yeah, this is awesome. Then I had this crazy idea. Durango was about 350 miles from my house, which was in Monument, Colorado, growing up. And uh, I was like, you know, I'm going to ride my bike home from college. And so this one day, I mean, so I, I was training a lot for it. And this one day I was able to ride, literally, I rode 350 miles. It took 28 hours straight. I was like falling asleep riding my bike, you know. Um, but I did it. And what I discovered is, is one of the reasons I was able to do such what people would say insane things is because of the rhythm of riding my bike year, day after day, year after year, it led to strength. Okay, like I had this base of strength in bike riding that led to uh, physical strength. And, and I'm wondering, like in a similar way, like, like the rhythm of riding led to physical strength. I think that the, the Jesus rhythms can lead us to spiritual strength. And I'm, I'm wondering if maybe the reason that so many people are weak spiritually these days is because they don't have the Jesus rhythms happening in their life. And so that's what I want to talk about 
this morning. And, and so I was thinking about like, what? Okay, okay, I get it, Adam. I, I should have these Jesus rhythms, these spiritual rhythms. I got to find the rhythm. It's God's design, these Jesus rhythms. They're my lifeline. So which Jesus rhythms are like the most important? That's what I've been wondering. Which ones are the most important? So you know what? I, ha I had a great idea. You want to know what it is? If I want to know which Jesus rhythms are the most important, I should consult Jesus. I should look at how did Jesus spend his time on earth? Do you guys think that's a good idea? Like how to find what's, yeah, genius. So let's go to the Bible. Let's look at, I'm going to show you some verses. I'm going to need your help. This is going to be on the screen. If you see a word underlined, that means say it with me. Got it? Okay. Luke 5, 16 says this. And the question in our mind is, how did Jesus spend his time on earth? Luke 5, 16. But Jesus Often. withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Good. Luke 6, 12. One of those days, Jesus went out on a mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. Good. Luke 18, 1. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. Luke 22, 40. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray. That you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw away beyond them and knelt down and prayed. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Now, that's just a couple of verses. I could show you a lot more, but it seems like Jesus was always praying, right? Like Jesus lived out this rhythm of prayer. Prayer was the lifeblood of Jesus' ministry on earth. Now, check this out. I, I want you to think some. Imagine that Jesus physically showed up at, at Frontier Ranch this weekend, and he was like, hey guys, what up? I'm going to teach you one thing. <clears throat> Anything that I do, I could teach you how to do. Like, what would you ask Jesus to teach you how to do? Anything that he did, like he could teach you how to do it. Any thoughts? Turn water, oh, beautiful. Turn water into wine. Anybody else? Walk on water. That's what I'm talking about. Like, Jesus, you got to teach me how to walk on that pool over there. What, yeah. How to make the blind see. That would be awesome. Anybody else? What? How to make people walk like you couldn't walk? Yeah. How to split the river in half. How to split the, the, the Red Sea in half. Yeah. How to cure cancer. Yeah. Like, hey, wait, I didn't hear this. I didn't hear this from you guys. Know what I was thinking? Like how to raise people from the dead, right? Like that would be awesome. Good. All right. All right. Okay. All right. Idea time over. I loved all your ideas. Share the rest of them with your small groups. But you want to know something crazy? Here's what I find crazy. Like for me, if I got to ask Jesus something, I'd be like, dude, teach me how to heal people or raise people from the dead because that would be awesome. But the, the guys who actually hung out with Jesus, I want you to see this. Check out what they, like they actually hung with him. They saw him walk on water. They saw him turn water into wine. They saw him heal people. And what did they ask him to teach them? I, I find it fascinating. Check this out. Luke 11, 1, it says this. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. I'm like, what? Like these guys saw Jesus raising dead people and they're like, hey, can you teach me how to pray? I'd be like, dude, teach me how to do that. I want to walk on the lake like you're walking on the lake. That is awesome. And they're like, uh, can you teach us how to pray? Like, I'm sure Jesus taught them a lot of things, but the one thing that they asked him, like, hey, Jesus, you got to teach us how to pray. My question is, why did they do that? Like, why did they ask him to teach them how to pray? I'm thinking it's because Jesus was always praying. They hung out with him and they realized, oh, for Jesus, prayer is as essential as breathing. And so they were like, man, th I think they saw that the reason Jesus was able to do all that other stuff is because of his prayer life. Like, because they realized Jesus is a man of prayer. So to help, uh, to, uh, help this stick, here's what we're going to do. I'm thinking, okay, so if Jesus prayed, we got to pray. So here's how we're, what's going to happen. From, from now until we're done, actually from now until the end of this weekend, anytime you hear, say, one, hear one of us say, we got to pray, then you're going to respond. If you're a female in the room, you're going to say, pray like cray. Then after they say that, guys, 
you're going to say, every single day. No, every single day. <laughs> so girls are, pray like cray. Guys, every single day. Okay? I say, we got to pray, and then you guys respond. Let's do a practice. Ready? We got to pray. Pray like cray. Every single day. Nice. That sounded good, but listen, listen. What we need is loud, not good. We need loud. So, one more time. We got to pray. Pray like pray. Every single day. All right. I want to see if the guys can be louder than the girls this time. We got to pray. Pray like pray. Every single day. That was close. I think it was a tie. One more time. We got to pray. Pray like pray. Every all right, so you're going to have to pay attention. Listen, listen. You have to pay attention. If you randomly hear me say that at any point, you got to respond. You guys know your parts now, right? Okay, so check it out. Here's what's awesome about prayer. Like, you don't have to be Jesus. Even though Jesus was always praying, you don't have to be Jesus to pray. Like, if I'm like, hey, go raise somebody from the dead, you'd be like, uh, I don't know how to do that. If I'm like, hey, go pray, you could, oh, I, I, you can actually do it. Prayer is for everyone, and you can do it everywhere. You can do it when you're walking to school. You can pray when you're walking into Chick-fil-A. You can pray, like, like when you're riding the bus, when you're sitting in class, if you get bored. Like, when you're laying in bed at night, when you're walking your dog. You can pray anywhere. Now, I want to make sure you guys really get this. So I want to show you a couple more verses to make sure you get how big of a deal the rhythm of prayer was for Jesus. So check this out. Mark chapter 1. Let me tell you what's happening. Jesus had spent the whole day healing people and doing all this, caring for people and doing, casting out demons, doing all this stuff. He does this all day, and then it becomes nighttime. And that's where we're going to pick up this verse. Mark chapter 1, verse 32. Whew, you guys ready? It says, that evening after sunset, see how it says after sunset? That makes me think it was at night, okay? Many sick people and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus. The whole town gathered at the door to watch. So Jesus healed many people who were sick with various diseases, and he cast out many demons. Okay, so Jesus was doing lots of work. Late in, this started after sunset, and so I'm guessing by the time he's done, the whole town gathered. By the time he's done, it's late. Maybe 10, 11, 12 o'clock. So he goes to sleep. He's probably exhausted, probably like, man, that was an intense day of casting out demons and healing people. And I need to sleep in tomorrow, right? But check out the next verse. Here's what Jesus did, does. He doesn't sleep in. It's, this is crazy. Mark 1.35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark... I'm talking like 4.35 in the morning. Jesus got up, left the house, and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Yeah. He, Jesus gets up soup. Like if anybody doesn't need to pray, it's Jesus. And he's getting up early to go and pray. And tell me, with this indicating to me that, man, Jesus had this rhythm of prayer, and it was very important to him. He wasn't going to miss it no matter what. He had this rhythm of prayer no matter what. He was going to pray. One more verse to kind of prove this to you guys, and then we'll uh, move forward. Luke twenty-two thirty-nine. You guys still with me? Okay. No, who said no? Come on. Okay. You guys with me? All right. Luke twenty-two thirty-nine. Jesus went out as... To the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, Pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them and knelt down and... Pray. Now, what I want to point out is the as usual part. See that word as usual? Everybody see it? Okay, good. Now, another translation of the same verse says it differently. Go to the next slide. It says, as was his custom. So as usual and as was his custom kind of mean the same thing, right? Here's what this indicates to me. It's saying it was, it was his routine, it was his rhythm, like he regularly, normally, he had a habit of going to pray. Okay, I'm just trying to like make sure you guys see that we see that Jesus is going and praying, and then we see the Bible saying that it was his custom, it was his habit, it was his rhythm to get alone with God and prayer. It was huge for Jesus. He didn't just pray 
when he was driving down the road, he didn't just pray when he was walking and talking about, he was, Jesus purposely built in this rhythm of prayer into his life all the time. Now, if, I think if Jesus were here, what he would say to me and you is, we got to pray. Pray like pray. Every single day. All right. So I could give you tons more verses, but I think you guys, are you guys getting it that Jesus spent his time on earth praying a lot? Okay. If not, I could just keep going, but I think you're getting it. Now, here's, the, here's, here's this. Listen, if Jesus, Jesus is God in the flesh, and if Jesus needed to pray that much, and I'm thinking about myself. I'm like, dang, I like really, really, really need to pray, right? Like if Jesus needed to pray like crazy, then I need to pray like Really like crazy. Like, I don't know. Like, every single day. So, we got to pray. Pray like crazy. Every single day. All right. So, how many of you in this room have worried about something in the last week? Anything. Worried about something in the last week? Yeah, put your hands down. That's what I thought. Almost everyone in the room, if you're being honest, I think you have worried about something in the last week. And why I'm talking about that is that the Jesus rhythm of prayer is the solution to everything. And that's what we're gonna look at right now. We're gonna turn to Philippians. And Paul was the author of Philippians. And right now when he's writing this verse that we're gonna look at, these verses we're gonna look at, he's in prison. So if he knows about worry, if he knows about problems, I mean, you can count on the fact that he's telling the truth because he's in prison when he's writing this message to the Philippians. And so we're just going to pick it up in Philippians 4, 6 through 7 and just read this, these amazing words that Paul writes as an encouragement to the church. And we're going to take them personally today. We're going to say this is an encouragement to me in my life today. For all those worries you guys just raised your hands for, it's a solution to those worries. This is what it says in, in Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Don't worry about anything. Instead... Pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Paul says this. He says, don't worry about what? Don't worry about anything. And then he says, pray about what, you guys? What does he say? Pray about everything. everything. Pray about everything. That's the Jesus rhythm. That worry that you had this last week or those 100 worries you had this week, pray about those things. Those things are for God alone. The Jesus rhythm is you're in the world and there's worries and there's stress and then you come back over here and you're praying about everything and then you're over here and there's so much stress and the world is getting to you and then you're coming over here and you're praying. That's the Jesus rhythm of prayer and Paul writes about that. Pray about everything everything. The thing that I hate the most that I hear people say, maybe not the most, but one of the things I hate the most is when I hear somebody say, well, I guess all we can do now is pray. I guess all there is left to do is pray. No, guys, it's the first line of offense. Pray first. I can just imagine God up in heaven like, yeah, I guess you're, you're, you're really out of luck now because all you have is me. You know, the creator of the universe, the one who made you and, and all the planets and the stars and is keeping the earth in motion and, and made everything just so. All you have left is me. So I guess, you know, you're kind of out of luck. No, pray first because the God of the universe is listening to you. Pray about everything, no matter what circumstances you're facing, no matter what is going on in your life. Paul says, pray about what? That means we got to pray. Oh, that was so, that, that was, was like weak. lethargic. That was weak, man. Yes. Let's try that again. We got to pray. And I'm not saying that as like a cute little saying. It's real life. That's why it was Jesus's custom to pray regularly because he knew that the things that were going on were for God alone to handle. And whatever is going on in your life is for God alone to handle. And that's why we have to make a Jesus rhythm of praying all the time, no matter what. And I want to tell you guys, this is what the Bible says. It says, tell God what you need and thank him for what he's done. It's not complicated. 
Tell God what you need. Tell God what's going on with your friends, what's going on with your teachers, what's going on with your parents, what's going on inside that you don't even understand. Tell God that. It's simple. Tell God what you need and thank him for what he has done. Another version, another translation says, um, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And we can present our request to God with a thankful heart because the Bible promises this, you guys, look up here. This is what the Bible promises you, is that God is with you always, that he is working together things for your good, that he's got everything handled. That's what the Bible promises us. And so that's why no matter what, we can present our request to God and say, God, thank you, because I know this is for you alone. And then the next part of this verse is the best part. It says, then you will experience God's peace. Who wants more peace in their life? I want more peace in my life. I want more peace when it comes to all the different areas of my life. And the Bible says that when you present your request to God, when you tell him what you need and you thank him for what he's done, then you get to experience God's peace. You want to know why? Because you're not carrying your load. You're saying, God, this load is for you alone. I'm over here. I'm giving it to you. This load is for you. And I know that you can handle it. And that peace, you guys, passes all understanding. It's the kind of peace when someone says, gosh, how are you doing okay? And you're like, I don't know. My life is kind of crazy and things are kind of a mess, but I know one thing, that the God of the universe loves me and he can handle my life and I'm giving it to him and that's how I'm okay. That's how I'm okay because the peace of God is guarding my heart it's taking care of my mind. It's taking care of all those worried thoughts that you have. That's what God's peace does for you. And it's not like a magic trick. It's not a magic trick of like, I really hope that if I give this to God, he'll take it and take care of it. It's the Jesus rhythm. You're over here and things are going on in your life. And then you're over here and you're saying, God, this is for you alone. And then you're over here and things are going on. And then you're over here talking to God day in and day out. Tell him what you need. Thank him for what he's done. And then the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind. So no matter what, what do we got to do? We got to pray. We have to pray like cray because that's how we're going to guard our heart and our mind in Christ Jesus. In Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't reserve things. Don't keep things for yourself. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on your own understanding in all your ways. Acknowledge him and he's going to direct your steps. That's what the Bible promises us. And so no matter what is going on, you have to to talk to God about it. You have to tell him what's going on. So when you're struggling with a friendship, we got to pray like pray every single day. When things are great and awesome, we got to pray like pray every single day. When someone you love is really, really sick and you're not sure what to do, we got to pray When you've got a million tests and practice and so many things you, going on you don't know what to do, we got to pray, like pray every single day. Yeah, we have to pray because that's the way that we give our requests to God and he handles them. That's how he guards our hearts and our minds. And that's how he takes care of all the things in our life and works them out for good. So, so what do we got to do? We got to pray. Pray. Oh, you guys got it. You guys got it. So we've been talking about prayer a lot. So I figured maybe we should actually do it, like actually spend some time praying. So what we're going to do, we're going to walk through. I'm going to kind of guide you, but we're going to do a, a couple different prayer things. And this might be a little bit uncomfortable, but I'm going to ask everybody to just try whatever we're asking. And I think that you'll find, wow, maybe actually you'll connect with God. So I need everybody to stand up for this part. Everybody stand up.